Welcome to this HP Video Technical Configuration Guide. In this TCG we're discussing PVST Plus and Rapid PVST Plus configuration on HP Comware and Cisco switches. This is the first part of two parts discussing PVST configuration on HP Comware and Cisco switches. In this first part we'll look at guidelines and command explanations. In part two We'll continue with a practical demonstration of the setup of PVST on HP Comware and Cisco switches. For a quick overview, continue watching part one and to see the commands used on live equipment, continue with part two. The topology consists of four switches, two HP switches running the Comware operating system and two Cisco switches running Cisco iOS. Comware one, will be configured as the root for VLANs 1, 3 and 5 and Cisco 1 will be configured as the root for VLANs 2 and 4. That will allow for load sharing where VLAN 3 traffic uses this uplink, VLAN 2 traffic this uplink, VLAN 5 and VLAN 4. So load sharing from the access layer to the core will be enabled by configuring both Comware 1 and Cisco 1 as the root switch for various VLANs. The specific devices used in this topology are two HP 5800 series switches running the Comware operating system 520105 and this release and two Cisco 3750 switches running 12255SE IP services iOS. The specific binary file used by the Conway devices is this and the Cisco devices is this. Some guidelines with regards to spanning tree. Spanning tree is not enabled by default on HP Conway devices. When spanning tree is enabled, the default spanning tree used is multiple spanning tree. Cisco devices use per VLAN spanning tree plus or rapid per VLAN spanning tree plus by default. Rapid PVST is compatible with PVST. So based on the BPDUs received, a Rapid PVST device will fall back to using PVST with a device that only supports PVST. Refer to the device release notes for software versions that support PVST. There is a limitation on the number of VLANs that instances can be maintained for, and this is switch dependent. Typically, 128 instances can be configured on an HP Comware switch, which means only 128 VLANs can be supported with each having its own spanning tree instance. Be aware that Cisco PVST costs are different to multiple spanning tree costs, depending whether the short or long method is used. And I'll explain that in a moment. So when should you use PVST? In general, best practices avoid the use of any spanning tree in a large LAN because of the long convergence times. IRF would be a better option in a lot of cases. If spanning tree is deployed, multiple spanning tree is the best choice for VLAN load balancing. PVST is only recommended when integrating Comware-based switches into an already existing PVST implementation. PVST Plus is based on the IEEE 802.1D standard and additional proprietary extensions. This is a Cisco proprietary protocol. Rapid PVST Plus is based on the IEEE 802.1W standard with additional proprietary extensions. Once again, both of these protocols are Cisco proprietary protocols. Cisco does also implement multiple spanning tree, but unlike spanning tree or rapid spanning tree, where bridges in a LAN must forward their packets in the same spanning tree, PVST allows each VLAN to build a separate spanning tree. In other words, there's a spanning tree instance per VLAN. Provision switches are configured to use Rapid PVST Plus and Comware switches to use PVST Plus, but both do support PVST and Rapid PVST. Default path costs do vary. The default on Cisco is to use a cost of 19 for fast Ethernet, 4 for gigabit and 2 for 10 gigabit interfaces. 
This can be changed to use the industry standard costs by using the command spanning tree path cost method long. Then the 802.1t costs will be used. So 200,000 would be used for fast ethernet, 20,000 for gigabit, 2,000 for 10 gigabit. HP Conway switches by default use 200, 20 and 2 as the path costs. This can be changed to use industry standard costs by using the command stp path cost standard dot one t. So when integrating HP Conway switches into a Cisco environment, three options can be used. The legacy mode is the default mode used on HP Conway switches. Dot one d 1998 can be used to match the default cost of Cisco switches. So if Cisco switches haven't been configured to use the long method, configure your HP switches to use dot one D costs. Dot one T is the choice to use when Cisco switches have been configured with the long method. This uses the industry standard cost values. So when integrating Conway switches into a PVST environment, check whether the Cisco switches are using the long method or the default method and then configure your Conway switches to match what the Cisco switches are using. To configure PVST on an HP Conway switch, type system view, set the spanning tree mode to PVST, change your path costs, in this case using the equivalent of the long method on Cisco, set your spanning tree priorities, in this case VLANs 1, 3 and 5 are configured with a priority of 0, and VLANs 2 and 4 are configured with a priority of 4096. And then enable spanning tree if it hasn't been previously enabled. Configure user facing ports as edge ports or port fast ports. So in this example, interface gigabit 101 is configured as an edge port. The equivalent configuration on Cisco, type enable, conf t, set the mode to rapid PVST or PVST. The HP Conway switches will adjust to either PVST or rapid PVST mode depending on the BPDUs received. Use extended system IDs where the priority field consists of the VLAN number and the priority. Configure your VLAN priorities. So in this case VLANs 1, 3 and 5 are configured with a priority of 4096 and 2 and 4 with a priority of 0. This is the opposite of the HP Conway switches and thus will allow for load sharing on uplinks. Configure interfaces to use the long method for cost calculations. This is the command that you need to look for when implementing HP Conway switches into a Cisco environment as this will determine which cost should be configured on the HP switches. This command enables all access ports to become port fast ports or to use the industry standard term edge ports. As a strategy, when integrating HP switches into a Cisco environment and configuring them to use PVST, remember that the defaults on Cisco are PVST or rapid PVST. HP switches do not use spanning tree by default. Check which costs are being used by the Cisco switches as that will determine the costs used on the HP switches. Configure your HP switches to use PVST. Configure your root priorities for load sharing enable spanning tree on the HP switches and check the topology. Here's a list of show commands or display commands that will allow you to view the setup and configuration of spanning tree. These are very useful commands to check if spanning tree is operating correctly. A word of warning about DTP or dynamic trunk protocol. DTP is a Cisco proprietary protocol used to auto negotiate trunk encapsulation and trunk setup between two Cisco switches. HP switches do not support DTP. If a Cisco switch is unable to negotiate trunking by using DTP, it will configure the port as an access port. If a BPDU is then received on a non-trunk port, the port will go to an inconsistent state. And if you type show spanning tree on the Cisco switch, you may see a message such as follows, blocking point to point type INC. This means that the port is in the broken state because of an inconsistency. In this case, type inconsistent. To prevent this, 
hard code trunk ports and turn off DTP. So as an example, on port FA103 on Cisco One, the encapsulation is set to dot one q The permitted VLANs or allowed VLANs are one to five. The port is manually configured as a trunk and DTP is turned off. If you type show spanning tree on a Cisco switch and see this message, it may be because DTP has not been able to negotiate properly, so turn it off. That concludes this first part of the configuration of PVST on HP Comware and Cisco switches. Part two continues the discussion with a practical demonstration of the setup and testing of PVST on HP Comware switches and Cisco switches.